uh, Jeannie, the sister, the snarky sister, comes in to me in the office, and it's late in the film, and um, and so she says, um, uh, "Is Mr. Rooney in?" And I said, "No, he's not, young lady," or something like that. And uh, and she then she gives me big lip and turns on her heel and flounces out. And then I just look down at my desk and I'm looking at a piece of paper and I just say, uh -uh, a little dickhead. Or, I'm not sure what I said, but it's, it was rude. <laughs> so many of you, if you're John Hughes fans, know that he was a very fast writer and there's sort of legends of how fast he wrote and they're, they're all true. So I'll tell a quick story about how this script came to be. He was in a deal at Paramount, and the chairman of Paramount was pressuring him, you got to give us a script, you got to give us a script, because there, that year, it was 1985, there was a threat of a strike, a writer's strike, and if he didn't turn in a script that he was going to direct, he wouldn't be able to, to shoot it. The strike never happened, but they didn't know that. And the, we were in, uh, he was in pre-production on Pretty in Pink, which was just about to start shooting. And so if he didn't have his script ready, he couldn't go. And he didn't, and he told Ned Tannen at the time this shred of an idea, like Ferris Bueller. I got an idea about a kid who takes a day off from school. And Ned, who was a big fan, who said, like, okay, whatever. I was like, that sounds great. And uh, one night, he was being pressured by Howie Deutsch, who was directing Pretty in Pink, to do the final rewrites on that script, which John hated doing rewrites. Uh, he, he mostly wrote as he was going along. So Howie said, I'm coming over to your house. I'm going to stay there all night. We'll do the rewrites. And uh, then you'll give them to me, and you'll be done, and you can go off and do your own thing. So he comes over to John's house, and John was a night owl. He worked all night long. Usually that's when he wrote. So Howie and John discussed it. He went upstairs. He said, okay, just wait down here, Howie. Let me go to work. Howie falls asleep on his couch about midnight. John works all through the night. Light comes up in the living room. John comes downstairs at 6 in the morning. Howie literally wakes up, gives him a cup of coffee. He says, Howie, Howie, this is great. you got to read this. He says, did you do my rewrites? He said, no, 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 but read this. And it was the first 50 pages of Ferris Bueller. And then he got excited about the idea, and he wrote it. And how I said, okay. And he read it, and he said, this is great, John. You've got to finish it. And he finished it in three days, turned it into the studio, and the studio greenlit the movie. I actually did add a line to John's uh, script in that first audition, because it ended uh, the swirls of blood, the sweeties, the kids, all the they all adore him is the way the line ended. And because I like the Chicago accent, I thought it would be good to say, they think he's a righteous dude. <laughs> and uh, nobody said, John just kind of grinned. <laughs> and I had a good feeling about it even then. And it was just a wonderful working situation. And, uh